Hello everyone, welcome to KSR Data Vision YouTube channel. So in this video, we'll discuss about what is this Unity catalog. And as a data engineer, you need to be aware of Databricks. And in Databricks, we have a concept called Unity catalog. So, well, it started in 2021, but it slowly started getting implemented in from 23 onwards. For the last two years, companies have been exploring this and we are doing a lot of possible things is happening in this Unity catalog. So let's see what is this Unity catalog. So for this Unity catalog, Log, let's have an agenda of having a short story. I always want to put the concept into a very layman terms and we'll discuss about how was the life before this concept and how the life has changed after this innovation within Databricks. And finally, we'll see some of the features what this Unity catalog can do, right? So to get started with the short story, and um, I'm sure you will really understand this layman explanation and that you can compare it with your Unity catalog. So imagine you are in your office, right? So in your office, there is a conference room, maybe a meeting room, and we have the pantry, or maybe we have different, different halls and different, different rooms. And if, if you want to go into any of the meeting room, right? What if you had like keys like this, right? What if you have keys like this? So for every room, if you have a lock-in key, and how many keys that you can carry? And by the way, from the admin side, they cannot go and give a bunch of keys for everyone, right? So you can hardly have two keys, right? One is spare and maybe one is for using. And how many people you can give, right? So everyone cannot roam with a chain of keys to access the room, correct? Now, nowadays what has happened? we have a access card feature. So what do you do with the access card? The day you get into this company, there will be an ID card that will be an access card that will be given. And irrespective of your company's building and whatever the rooms which you are privileged, you will can directly access your access card and then you can enter, right? So this avoids the unnecessary of carrying your lock and keys. Now, I hope you have experienced this type of the lock features, correct? Now, if I want to talk about even more detail, if with this access keys, with this chain of keys, if you want to go to multiple rooms, you will have to carry multiple keys, which is not possible, right? And the admin has to hand over to everyone a set of keys, which is quite difficult to manage, right? And no one even will know which door you have access because you've been given all the keys. So this is exactly what happens if you are maintaining a chain of keys. But if you go with the access card, the complete floor, the complete all the rooms will be replaced with the electronic access. And each employee will have one ID card attached with the access card. And the card doesn't open for every room because you will be given a privilege, right? For your role, for your particular experience, you'll be given access to certain rooms. You'll be given privilege to certain rooms. Only those can be accessible, correct? And finally, the entire team, the security team knows that which room you have access, when you have you entered and when are you coming back. So everything will be tracked. Now, this is exactly what is happening in our Databricks also. Okay. Now, just imagine we have a Databricks workbook or I can say it as workspace. Now, let's consider this as a project one and let's consider this as a project two, right? So we have two different projects. Now, exactly what is happening before 2021 and that was without Unity Catalog, what was happening is imagine this is a project one, this is a project two and each workspace we need to have a separate access. We need to have a separate meta store. When I say meta store, like we used to collect all the data. What is a meta store? Meta data is all about data about the original data. And uh, for example, what is a file size? What is a file name? When did it got loaded? What format it is? What are the columns that it has? So all this we'll call it as a metadata. Now for every project, you will have a separate user management. You will have the separate meta store and we'll have a separate compute engine, right? Now, if you have 10 projects, for example, 10 workspace. Now the access becomes very difficult because for each and every workspace, I need to give access. For each and every workspace, I need to give access. This is exactly like what you need to give 10 rooms, 10 keys. It's quite difficult, right? Now, as an approach, now we'll go with the access card method. That is now what they have done all the user management and meta store they have created as a one centralized data governance right so even though we have 10 projects all 10 projects access will be maintained by one particular catalog which is nothing but unity catalog 
right so imagine all these projects are related projects if they are related projects access should be given in such a way that everyone is accessible quite easily but without unity catalog what is happening we have different different workspaces and we have different different access that has been given it's quite difficult to manage completely right with this unity catalog now the things have become very smooth okay the access management and the complete privileges storing the metadata and everything they have made it as one centralized data governance right so to get even more deeper into this before unity catalog each and every workspace we will have to manage the access separately and you will not even know what are the tables available what are the tables you are going to access which are the tables you are going to use it for your projects so you have to create your own list you have to create your own list and let's say for one project we are using certain data and the another project that is another workspace needs the same data the only way is you will have to copy the data into different workspace right and auditing let's say we have to track it for every workspace we need to track what is happening so auditing was also happening separately so this all was in the past but in the present after unity catalog came into picture we have a centralized unity catalog so it becomes easy search across the projects across the workspace we can easily go and do a search and we can go to know what is happening within the system the granting access can be done at a workspace level so entire team can access at workspace and again we can put privileges but overall this is a the major improvement what databricks has come across in the form of a unity catalog where you can grant access to a complete workspace okay and one unified audit where all the auditing can happen with respect to different different workspaces okay now technically speaking forget about all what the layman explanation what we learned about different keys and replacing with access key now that access key is nothing but your unity catalog unity catalog is data bricks centralized data governance and access control complete data bricks access can be managed with the help of unity catalog now don't think this is as a, a data warehousing but think this as a the system with the security and auditing system that is for the entire data bricks right so you can have the centralized meta store you can give access to certain tables and objects and it also helps us to figure out what is happening within that particular workspace all the auditing can happen right so with this unity catalog you can do a lot of things for your project access has been more generalized the data governance has been protected and we have a lot of restrictions that we can do with the help of unity catalog right now i've taken a snapshot from the databricks workspace so in this databricks workspace where you can go and create a new notebook you can create a new work space i would consider as a every workspace as a, like a new project so imagine here we have the catalog so once we go inside the catalog you will see this type of options okay so this is the catalog inside the catalog you have something called schema so schema is somewhere close to one module within the project where we can maintain all the fact tables dimension tables and inside the schema we have a table so the hierarchy will be catalog followed by schema followed by tables now this is exactly what we call it as unity catalog now in general anyone who is using a databricks for that particular organization can be given privilege to catalog or schema or table so that the access has been generalized and it has made it as one centralized data governance so that anyone can go and access and according to the role we can also give the particular access like read access write access or load access all of this we can give right so in the last couple of years all the companies have started using unity catalog to make sure that the things are becoming easier to run the project before this what happened we will have to maintain for every workspace we will have to maintain separate separate storages like separate separate tables again separate separate accesses but now it has been made even more neat and clear right now with this let me tell you all the a to z about unity catalog right so in the architecture wise you can have the control over the complete system and you can also have the data that you can store in the form of a tables right and as i said different projects will be having a different workspaces so you can bind it together across the projects you can have the accesses and as i said always the higher 
hierarchy will be the catalog inside catalog you can have schemas and inside schema you can have tables now from all the workspaces let's say we have 10 projects from all the 10 projects they can access the catalog data right and let's say data discovery so what is data discovery across the project you can simply go and search catalog.schema.table you'll be able to search any table rather than going and having a copy of data in different workspaces now we have a better we have a better approach we can store it at one place and we can access it wherever we want. We can access it across workspaces. That's what we are doing. Also, we can create a data for the external. Imagine the data is stored in some other cloud. The data is present in some other, but you can have the control. Who can access it? When can they access it? What they are doing? What access you need to need of? Everything you can have it, right? And as I said, you can also grant and revoke access for schema tables views. And each and every object can be protected well. That is a best feature of data governance. And initially we were having a hive meta store. As I said, each and every workspace have a different, different levels of access. Now it has been organized. So the legacy system is also been nowadays replaced by Unity catalog and followed by we can create multiple identities and groups. If you're belonging to one project, we can also have the identities uh, groups created and you can, you can be given the access followed by when you say about databricks databricks is all about running your cluster like running your jobs on the cluster for that also we can provide the access and who should have the select access read access write access see all of this has been managed from the security team right so if i'm giving a hard keys like the the normal lock-in keys right i will have to go and hand it out to everyone but in case of access card I can manage it from my security team who can access, who cannot access. I can do that. Exactly the same thing from the one space that is from the Unity catalog. I can give access to n number of people groups to have the access to the tables. Followed by we can have the column level, table level, all of these connections we can see. And uh, we also have a location like the complete data location has been managed by Unity Catalog. Naming conventions. Imagine in a project, you will have a bronze, silver, gold layers, and we have UAT production. All of this can be there. So in one particular catalog, we can create multiple schemas also. UAT schema, production schema, all this is manageable, right? And uh, as I said, we can create different objects, tables, views, functions, and certain people should have only access to certain rows. That is also possible. And if you want to connect to some external storages like snowflake that is also possible whether your access should be given as an owner or an admin even that is also possible right and followed by we have some metadata like what are the tables that we are tracking what are the columns we have what are the privileges what are the constraints all of this can be tracked by system tables built-in tables will be there and in case if it's a sensitive data we have to mask the data we can also mark it as sensitive data and the good thing is they also work like a very much similar to your standard SQL syntax that is also possible high volume data can be stored in this unity catalog tables the reason in the back end it is still the cloud so that is also possible and in case if you want to do some automation that is also possible and some external data sharing is also possible and in case if the data is present in any of the cloud storages you can still take control over it and you can create multiple copies well, I've covered all the A to Z, one of the beautiful features what we have in the recent times and every interview, they ask this question, right? Without Unity Catalog, there is no data engineering question. So try to be aware of what exactly it does. So try to relate this, try to relate this, the locking system, how the locking system was before and how the locking system is now with the access card. So this is called Unity Catalog. Initially, we have imagine all these doors are the data doors, right? Every time you want to enter into a data like a table, you will have to have the lock-in key. But now with just the access of Unity Catalog, you can go and access any door of data. That's a comparison. Well, I hope you have understood. And thank you so much for listening. Let's meet in the next video.